Starting with number 7, we have options bar to ribbon bar improvements. Now you can see that when I select the tag, all the options are now moved to ribbon bar. And when we select the wall, there are still some options that are left on the options bar, but this is a good trend, moving everything to the ribbons bar. Next, at number 6, we have new priority column and structure edit dialog. And what does that mean? It means that now you can customize the layer priority independently from the layer function. In reality, this will confuse existing Revit users, but in my opinion, it is a very welcome feature for new Revit users. And as you can see, now the priority will control how these layers join to each other. It will also control the wall wraps. Now this brings much needed emphasis to layer priority, because previously the number in brackets was hard to understand and explain to new Revit users. So overall, I really welcome this new feature. And next we have a very weighted feature, availability to create wall without core layers. And now for everyone who uses multi-wall modeling approach, you can now create finish wall without adding unnecessary core layers, which is very nice. Now further continuing with the multi-wall modeling, we have a new feature that allows us to add finish walls to segments and auto join or auto join and lock as you can see here. We can now place wall by hovering elements or we can even place a finishing walls for the whole room in one click and this will for sure speed up the modeling at the beginning of the design stages. Now the finish walls are joined and locked to the host walls and when I move the host wall the finish walls move along. Very nice. Now, at the third place of the new feature list is the improvements to manage links dialog. It now shows the imported CAD formats with the file size, which is truly incredible. We can now select and we can delete unwanted imported CAD files and once and for all clean up the Revit model. Very, very nice. I don't remember how long I was waiting for this feature to arrive. And the second most important feature in Revit 2026 is view to sheet position. Now we can save the positions and pick multiple anchor points like view origin, center and so on. So when we select the view, we have new options. And when we click save positions, we can name the position. And then when we go over to another sheet, we can apply that saved position to new view. I remember that I wanted this feature when I was first starting my Revit journey 10 years or so ago. So this definitely takes a second place at a new feature list. And this will for sure improve the sheet formatting experience and the speed at which these sheets are formatted in a building project. And so at my new feature list stop is the accelerated graphics tech preview. This means that now we can test and use GPU rendering for displaying 2D and 3D graphics. So first let's test the standard way of rendering 3D graphics. Let's bring the task manager and see what is the load on the GPU. And when I pan and rotate the model, you can see that there are some 3D rendering load on my GPU. It is not much, around 30%. And when we move the model around, you can see that the frame rate is very low, there is some lag, and so on. So let's turn on the accelerated graphics. And we can see some warning dialogue telling us that this is tech preview with some limitation and that we can turn it on and off if we like. And let's let that load a little bit. After the feature is turned on, we can see a spike in 3D rendering load. We can see a blue border around the viewport, indicating that this is a preview view. Okay, now when rotating and panning 3D view, we can definitely see 3D rendering load increasement. Keep in mind that this is 13 years old GPU, and as you can see, the frame rate is still low. To me, it seems as low as before, but one thing I notice is that the elements are not disappearing when rotating. So let's try and turn on the shadows. 
and as you can see these shadows are not supported by accelerated graphics tech preview so when we turn this off we can see that the shadows are displayed the 3d rendering load is decreased and when we move the model the elements are disappearing again which probably helps with panning and rotation frame rate okay now let's check the 2d plan view performance because this feature is also available for 2d views with the feature turned off we can see that the panning and zooming is with quite low frame rate and we can see that the 3d rendering in my gpu is under load this is because in reality this plan view is in 3d view with some 2d elements like text tags and some line work but most of the geometry is cut 3d geometry now let's turn on the accelerated graphics to see if there is any frame rate performance improvements. And just as before, the frame rate is the same or even worse. When zoomed in, it gets better. But overall, for this GPU, it does nothing. As you can see here. So when zoomed out, it is still as slow as before. I know this is work in progress and probably will be finished in Revit 2027 with the early improvement updates. I just hope that they add support for older cards as mine because as you can see in the options my card is supported and meets the hardware acceleration requirements. And nevertheless this feature clearly takes the first place in my Revit 2026 feature list. This GPU support is long overdue and had to be implemented years ago. Because even with my RTX 3080 GPU, the model navigation was still lagging, which is clearly unacceptable. Soon I will test this feature on my high-end PC and RTX 3080, and I will probably make a video about that also, so you can see a comparison between these two cards and the performance. And the bonus feature that is not really a feature right now is the hope that the updated roadmap to finally include AI features in Revit. With all the AI craze in past two years, there has been no news or public plans about integrating AI into the Revit. There is this post from 2023. Our goal is to optimize the efficiency of your documentation workflows by automating repetitive and mundane tasks. We are committed to further developing and expanding a set of fundamental automations specifically designed for small-scale documentation tasks. This functionality serves as a essential groundwork for the implementation of more advanced and sophisticated layers of automation. So I really hope that this sentence means that they are working on AI that will automate these annotation tasks. By the 2023 Autodesk would have known for sure that the AI is here to stay and that the potential in AEC industry is huge. And with the release of Revit 2026, the roadmap will finally include plans for that. The roadmap will be updated in the coming weeks and I will keep you posted about this topic. There is no other company other than Autodesk with the resources and data needed to train and integrate a model that could actually automate annotation. And you can see that the current roadmap has no mention about AI. Meanwhile, a year ago, Archicad implemented AI Visualizer powered by Stable Diffusion. And that is all cool and good, but it is nowhere near the true potential of AI automation. So let's cross our fingers and wait a little bit. Okay, that's all folks. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned something new, please consider subscribing and see you in the next one.